The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. Okay. So I'm Eddie Schultz, and this is Mike Fitzgerald, and we work on a backend computer. And to start off, let's see a sh show of hands. Who here knows how to play backgammon? OK, a few. So to give you an idea of how it works, um, it involves both uh, skill and luck. And it's a two-player game. And the object is to move all your pieces past your opponent's pieces and off the board. So white's trying to move his pieces this way, down, and across. And brown's trying to move his pieces the other way. And you move by rolling the dice. Some important rules are that you cannot land on a point on which your opponent has two or more pieces. And if your opponent only has a single uh, piece there, you can land on it and send it back to the beginning. <coughs> so the goals of this project when we started off were, first of all, to implement the rules of backgammon, get the game going. And that took a good amount of work. The next, we wanted to create or find a function that evaluates or says how good a given board is. And then we wanted to be able to look into the future uh, in, in order to better determine what move to choose now. And this is the part of the um, program that we parallelized. And finally, our last goal was to try to teach the player, um, teach the player how to improve by suggesting why one move might be better than another in English. So to start with, um, the two basic kinds of board evaluation are just a static evaluator and a neural net. And the static evaluator, static evaluator works by looking at features of the board and creating a score based on that feature, and then multiplying it by a weight based on how important that feature is, and summing them up. So a program like this was created by Hans Berliner at CMU in 1979. And it was actually the first program to beat a ruling world champion. And they said the program got a little lucky, but it did win. And one of the important features was it adjusted the weights as the game went on, because certain features became less important as the game progressed, and other features became more important. So the next approach that people have used is um, training neural nets um, to determine how good a board is. And these have been really successful. They work by basically playing hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of games uh, against itself. And so it improves this way. And after about a million and a half games, it reaches um, its maximum performance. And one such evalu uh, board evaluator is Poval, which was released by Jerry Tesoro in 1993. And this is the evaluation function that we use for our program. Looks like we lost network connection. This is the evaluation function that we use for our program. And he sort of released this as a benchmark evaluator so that other people in the development commu community could have something to compare their evaluators against. And it plays an intermediate level, if not a pretty strong level. So. Our next goal was to implement the search that looks into the future in order to help choose the best move now. One of the challenges of this is that the branching factor is so large because you don't know what the dice rolls are going to be in the future. And like in checkers, the, bran the branching factor is 10. In chess, it's 35 to 40. But in backgammon, for a turn, it's around 400. Another challenge that we faced in the search was was that um, the pub eval function that we use is not zero sum. So that produced some challenges that we'll, you'll see. And also, there's the question of whether serping, searching deeper actually does produce better play. And most papers say that the board evaluator is more important than the searching deeper. But they do say that searching into the future uh, does improve play. And especially when you're already at a pretty high level of play where everyone's near the same and playing really well, a slight, perform a slight increase in performance could make a big difference. So here's 
an illustration of the search tree to give you a better idea of how it works. So say it's X's turn. There might be 20 or so moves that um, he can commit. Now these are series of moves. So you roll the two dice, and if they're doubles, you get four moves. Um, certain turns, you may not be able to move at all, so you might not have any moves. So that really varies. So after those 20 moves, O's, the other player, O, is going to roll. And there's 21 different dice combinations he can have. And then for each of those, there's about 20 moves. And then it's X's roll. And once again, he has 21 dice combinations. And then X's move. So this is looking uh, two moves into the future. So the idea is to build this search tree. And then at this point, we're already up to 3.5 million boards. And so you have all these leaf nodes that represent your boards. And you're going to evaluate them with your evaluation function to determine how good they are. Since it's not zero sum, you have to evaluate it for both player. And these, both of these values need to get passed up um, as you're going to move back up the tree to determine the best move. So you start at the bottom, and you say that since it's X's move, he's going to choose the best possible move given that roll. And then in order to move up further and calculate the value for the parent node, you say it's equal to the probability of the dice roll for the child node times um, the value that's stored in that child node. And then you keep doing this and repeating this. O picks his best move and sort of sums the expected value. And then you get back up to the top, and X picks his best move. So now I'm going to hand it over to Mike, who's going to talk about the part of the code that we parallelize. And There's a question. Quick, you, quick yeah. question. Can you use alpha beta pruning? Do you know about alpha beta pruning? Uh, yeah. Use? People have used that. And um, just like a beam search and narrowing it down. Um, Typically, by you know, down to the square root of n, so you would have a 20 branching factor rather than a 400. It seems like a real payoff if you could make it work here. I don't know if, yeah. if there's some reason to back in and why it's hard. Um, well, we, we actually didn't get to that point. Mm -hmm. We were just spent a lot of time just implementing the rules of the game. All right, so, um, so, so the, the first thing we, we looked at and said, um, this would be perfect for parallel, parallelizing, is uh, just the brute force evaluation of those you know, million of boards that you get down to at the end, um, which if you want th run through on one processor just takes a while. So we decided to um, just uh, uh, generally evaluation of a board regardless of its state takes the same amount of time. So we just had to split the number evenly between um, SPUs. Uh, we had to keep it around a multiple of four just to get um, the DMA calls to line up nicely with the floats that we were returning and things like that. Um, so, if you're evaluating a million boards, which was our a million was our number for our benchmarks that we did, um, each SPU has about 170,000 to handle, uh, and it clearly can't uh, take all those over at once. So each SPU knows uh, where it's supposed to start and how many it's supposed to do, and it knows how much it can pull over. So uh, it. It does a DMA call to pull in as much as it can process, processes those, uh, evaluates them, returns them, and, and gets its next bunch. So uh, that is what we were, we were able to implement. Uh, there's also clean opportunity for double buffering there for pulling them in uh, as it's actually evaluating the previous ones. So uh, that would be actually a pretty uh, easy step to do next. But each of those six should roughly finish at the same time and then get back to um, the PPU to, to evaluate, to, to run up that tree. And uh, another opportunity to make it a bit quicker, which we didn't quite get to, would be uh, simdizing the evaluation function. So we could do four boards at once with the vector intrinsics instead of uh, just one. So the performance that we got when looking at uh, you know, the number of SPUs we were using was actually roughly um, in proportional to the number of SPUs we were using. It's actually uh, 18.18 at the top there. So when using two instead of one, we got just about half. When using three instead of one, we got just about a third. Um, if you just look at the speed up graph, it's 
pretty much one to one from um, from the number of SPs we were using to the amount of time it took. So it was a, a pretty efficient algorithm for splitting those up and evaluating them and pulling them back together. Um, I'll give you a brief demo. I'll show you quickly uh, how it looks. I might have to fudge our network connection a little bit here. But. So we used um, just an X Windows setup to um, display our, our GUI that we were using. Um, so I'm just going to play a couple rounds with the display, um, let's say against the computer. So. So you can see the, the computer just took a couple moves there. But basically what we get here uh, is a printout of uh, a text representation of the board. And then uh, it's my turn. I rolled a six and a two. Uh, it shows here. Uh, it does its own evaluation and says this is what the best move combo would be for me at this point. Um, in the ideal tutoring situation, we don't just let the user pick what they thought was the best and then tell them why not. But right now, with the time we had, this is how we did it. So then it lists all the legal possible moves you can make. So say I want to move from 0.6 to 0.4. Uh, it moves my piece up there. And then from 8 to 2, for example. And then the computer makes its couple moves. So um, that's the general idea. You can run the computer against itself as many times just to test different uh, evaluation functions against each other. You can also do it without the animation on the GUI so that it runs a lot quicker. Um, but that's the general idea. Um, <coughs> just to wrap up uh, a few more slides. Uh, the way we went about this basically was uh, we just got sequ sequential code working on just the PPU, got the rules of the game worked out, um, all the weird conditionals and, and things that can happen in that game, and we fixed, fixed out our bugs and our memory leaks and things like that. Um, we just shelled out the parallel code and got that working on the PPU, then on one SPU, uh, and then on six. So um, it was a pretty clean process of doing it. And uh, we ran into a few walls. We aren't really backgammon experts or even intermediate players. So it was kind of a new thing for us to make sure we had the rules right and we were, weren't doing stupid things here and there. Um, but also managing the search tree was a big deal. and, th and that. Looking at what, what the program has to do in running the game, that's the next thing we'd want to tackle as far as parallel, parallelizing goes. Um, it takes a while, and uh, it's, it's pretty tough. So um, We ran into some memory management issues with how we were representing our boards. Um, we were able to pack them down into, I think, a 24-byte structure, 20-byte structure. Um, to be able to pass more to the SPUs at one time. Um, but, who? Oh. Uh, do you level together? Or how was the general idea of a search you had into SPU? Sorry, I missed the beginning of your question because it wasn't on speakerphone.
So, but we got the parallel code working for actually evaluating the boards. It shouldn't be too hard to um, just extend that tree. To That's extend the, the to move back up the tree and see what the best move is now. Um, yeah, so the, that's that's basically as far as um, the roadblocks we hit were. Any other questions? Oh, there's the other Yeah, so just some future ideas. Um, one of the big ones is for training um, the, the evaluation functions using neural nets. That takes a lot of time um, for, to play hundreds of thousands, millions of games. So one of the ideas is to parallelize that um, to help speed that up. And I think we're about out of time, so that concludes it. Are there any questions? I'm just curious. Uh, you said looking far into the future doesn't necessarily help as much as the evaluation function. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that, I mean, AI backgammon is, I mean, how computationally intensive is a good player? I mean, is it, I mean, is it a computationally intensive problem? Or I mean, do you even, I mean, if, would you benefit from the parallelism in a practical setting? Well, um, just looking at how long it takes to go through those million boards, like if you're playing a computer, you don't want to wait 18 seconds for them to make that move as opposed to the way that we can. Oh, so that's the time scale of the absolute. If you just ran on a uniprocessor, you're like 20 seconds kind of a thing. Um, yeah, when you're doing a million, a million boards about. And also, if you're on the level of, you know, competing against really good competitors, like just having a deep search tree to get that much more edge would make a difference. Um, in that situation.